I feel alive again. My only regret is not doing it sooner. My teeth are my favorite part of my body now. <laughs> I want to help you too. Call us now for our very special offer. Call 844-4M-DENTAL. The Barnes Firm has years of experience handling thousands of car crash cases. We will give you the support you need and help to get the best result the possible. Barnes Firm, injury attorneys, call 1-800-8-MILLION. Good morning, I'm Lena Bovia. I'm live here in Newport Beach at the scene of a deadly home invasion. One suspect in custody, the other dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We'll have the very latest coming up next. Good morning, I'm Lauren Lister in for Frank Buckley. Controversy on the USC campus. The university no longer allowing this year's valedictorian to deliver her commencement speech, citing security concerns. Those details ahead. Good morning, I'm Omar Lewis. Happening now, day two of the Donald Trump hush money trial is underway in Manhattan. Coming up, we'll tell you why dozens of potential jurors had to excuse themselves from the case and why the former president is calling the judge unfair. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. Local authorities warning hikers and other people participating in outdoor activities to be on the alert for thieves. We'll explain. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. Brand new here at 10 o'clock, Shakira with a major announcement about a local appearance here. We're excited to welcome her to Los Angeles. Excited to welcome live this hour, the great Lance Bass. What is Lance up to musically and more? We'll find out when he joins us live. Okay, and in the weather forecast, Long Beach now, clear skies. Clear skies all the way up and down throughout Southern California. And beautiful temperatures, coastal today, 69. Downtown, 77, 84 in the San Fernando Valley. High desert, 79. Inland Empire, 83. Orange County, inland, 79 degrees. Jessica, back to you. Breaking news in Newport Beach this morning. Police say a family was targeted in a home invasion early this morning. Shots were fired at some point, leaving one suspect dead and another injured. KTLA's Alina Bovian live near the scene now with the latest on the investigation. Alina, good morning. Jess, good morning. And you mentioned it. This was an isolated case, a targeted home invasion, and it was personal between the suspects and the homeowners. That's all according to Newport Beach Police. The situation at this point has been contained. One suspect was shot by the homeowner and was taken to the hospital to be treated. The other suspect was found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. That person believed to be deceased. Now, take a look behind me. This is uh, the area where it all happened. This is Newport Coast Drive and Pacific Pines. The actual the actual scene, however, is tucked away in a cul-de-sac at the end of Vista Lucci. Let's take a look at some Sky 5 video. This area still closed off considering this is still an active investigation. This is a 24-hour surveillance gated community, so it's unclear how the two suspects made it onto the property here. We know the initial call to police came in at 4.42 this morning. Four people were inside the house. They made it in through a side door. A man and two women and a juvenile believed to be the residents of the home. Someone from the house called police stating that the intruders were inside their house. Two minutes later, police were informed that someone from inside the home shot the suspect in the house. Two suspects then ran from the residence. When officers arrived on scene, they located one male suspect armed with a handgun. That person was taken into custody. The second suspect, excuse me, uh, was taken to the hospital to be treated for um, gunshot wounds, their condition unknown at this time. Now, Newport Beach police, they utilized a helicopter, K-9, and SWAT to contain the area. The helicopter then located someone in the bushes on Ocean Ridge. That suspect believed to have suffered from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. There were four people inside the home at the time, and all four are believed to be safe. At this point, it is unclear the circumstances around this home invasion, what personal matter existed between the suspects and the homeowners, but we do know this was personal and targeted. I just want to ensure the Newport Beach community and residents that this is a safe community. It was a targeted incident, so there are no threats to the community at this time that we're aware of. And I just want to ensure that the Newport Beach Police Department is doing everything that we can to ensure your safety and fully investigate this incident. 
and the mayor for Newport Beach, Will O'Neill, was here just a few minutes ago. He wanted a chance to speak with the media to reassure residents of this community that they are safe, that this was an isolated case, and also a reminder to anyone out there that if you do come to Newport Beach, he was defending the actions of the homeowner, saying that people here have every right to defend themselves. I'm Lena Berman reporting live here in Newport Beach, KTLA 5 News. Alina, thank you. Authorities in Ohio have charged an 81-year-old man with murder, saying he shot and killed an Uber driver sent to his home by a scammer. The moments before the killing were captured on the driver's dash cam, and we do want to warn you, you may find them disturbing. Investigators say William Brock was agitated because he just received a call from a scammer making threats and demanding money. It's unclear whether that scammer was the same one who ordered 61-year-old Lolita Hall to Brock's house, asking her to pick up a package. When she arrived, deputies say Brock confronted the driver and took her phone. They say when she tried to leave, Brock shot her three times before calling 911. Hall died at a nearby hospital. Brock has pleaded not guilty to murder charges and is due back in court next week. No other arrests have been made and Uber says it is cooperating with the investigation and has banned the account that sent Hall to Brock's home. Attorneys for Scott Peterson are back in a Northern California courtroom for a hearing as they try to get his murder conviction overturned. Peterson was found guilty of killing his pregnant wife and unborn child more than 20 years ago. Recently, the L.A. Innocence Project suggested that Lacey Peterson was abducted and killed by burglars who broke into a home across the street. The group is also calling for new DNA tests in hopes that the evidence will lead to a new trial for Peterson. Former President Donald Trump's hush money criminal trial has resumed in New York City. It could take weeks to seat a jury in the historic case. KTLA's Omar Lewis in the newsroom now with the latest. Omar, good morning. Jessica, good morning. Right now, potential jurors are being questioned and vetted for this historic case involving the former president to see if they may have a bias. This is the first criminal trial of a former president in U.S. history, and cameras were rolling as the former president arrived at the courthouse this morning. He made his way there from Trump Tower and spoke to cameras before entering the courtroom for day two. This is the first trial among four criminal prosecutions of the presumptive Republican presidential nominee jury selection officially got underway on Monday that process is expected to take at least a week and likely longer the former president is charged with 34 state counts of falsifying business records related to a hush money payment his former attorney made to adult film star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election the former president is now calling the judge in the trial unfair claiming that the judge would not allow him to attend his son's high school graduation However, Judge Juan Merchant actually says it may be possible for him to attend, but that depends on how this trial develops. Attorneys are now working to select a panel of 12 jurors and six alternates. New York City attorneys say this will be a long process because it's such a high-profile case. Yesterday, 50 of the 96 potential jurors were immediately dismissed because they said they could not be fair and impartial. This morning, more potential jurors have been dismissed for the same reasons. And and we're now hearing from one of them. You know, just, just being who I am, even though I think I could be impartial, I think there is definitely some unconscious bias. Um, all my friends growing up were Republican. I went to a Republican university, um, a slant Republican. So it just didn't feel fair to, to be in a jury like this, in a, in a case like this, to be fair. We have a Trump-hating judge. We have a judge who shouldn't be on this case. He's totally conflicted. But this is a trial that should never happen. It should have been thrown out a long time ago. And Americans are weighing in on this this morning. Take a look at this poll from the Associated Press on how Americans feel about Trump's alleged behavior here. 35% believe his actions were illegal. 31% believe it was unethical but not illegal. And then 14% believe the former president did nothing wrong. A guilty verdict would not bar Trump from office again. However, falsifying business records in New York is a felony that is punishable by up to four years in prison if he is convicted. Now, this 
entire trial is expected to take about six to eight weeks from start to finish, and there will be a hearing next week on whether Trump should be held in contempt for violating a gag order that banned him from talking about witnesses in this case. That's the very latest here live from the newsroom this morning. I'm Omar Lewis. We'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Omar, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, Mark, how's the weather looking? Looking uh, absolutely beautiful for a change, uh, and we're talking about a beautiful weekend for a change, which uh, is uh, great news for most. 64 at the moment. It's about 5 degrees warmer than yesterday at this time. Relative humidity, 63%, and the winds are calm in downtown Los Angeles. Almanac, yesterday, 67. Average for this time of the year, 72 degrees. In 1966, we hit a record of 99 degrees. Moderate air quality, a couple of areas right here along the coast where the air quality is good. And by tomorrow, we should see more areas of good air quality and also heading into the weekend. Uh, the marine layer will be coming back in for Thursday, Thursday morning, and also into Friday morning, uh, and that'll usher in some cooler temperatures, but we're not talking about any systems coming in from the northwest giving us rain like we did over the last weekend. Mostly clear skies through the afternoon hours.